Hi everyone, I received a recent request to create a video covering the basics of recycle bin forensics. So in this video, we're going to take a look at exactly what happens when you delete a file that gets placed into the recycle bin. First, a bit of history. The recycle bin was introduced way back in Windows 95. As a side note, I feel old because I very specifically remember August the 24th, 1995, the release date for Windows 95. I was a senior in high school and had just started my first official IT-related job working after school for a local computer company. In short, Windows 95 was a big deal. Many of the technologies and forensic artifacts introduced there are still around in some form today. In those days, the recycle bin was still located in the root of the OS drive as it is today, which of course is typically C colon backslash, and it was called Recycled. In Windows NT, it was renamed to Recycler, and starting with Windows Vista, all the way through modern versions of Windows to include Windows 10, it was renamed to $RecycleBin. In Windows 95, 98, and ME, there was a single shared file called Info2, INFO2, located in the root of the Recycled folder. The Info2 file contained metadata for the deleted files, including the name and full path of the deleted file, the size of the file, and the date and time in which it was deleted. In Windows NT, 2000, and XP, the Info2 file was still around, but now within the Recycler folder, we had subfolders for each user's SID or security identifier. These SID subfolders were created upon first deletion of a file that went to the recycle bin by any given user. Instead of the shared info2 file, each SID subfolder contained its own info2 file. And then finally, starting with Windows Vista, the recycler path that had been with us since the NT days was renamed to $RecycleBin. Now, instead of an info2 file within each SID subfolder, each deleted file will result in two files placed within the path. A $i file, which will contain metadata specific to that file, which again is the original file name and path of the file prior to deletion, the size of the file, and the time at which it was deleted. And then secondly, the actual file contents themselves will be stored within a $r file. Both of these files will be renamed to some random six character value and then $i and $r will be prepended to each one of them respectively, creating an eight character file name. So again, $i is metadata, $r is the actual recovery data representing the contents of the original file. So let's see this in action. On the desktop, I've got several different docx, xlsx, and png files. The recycle bin is currently empty. Let's delete this docx file and this png file. Now, if we look at the contents of the recycle bin, we'll of course see those two files that I just deleted. We see also their original locations, deletion dates and times, and sizes. This information is stored within the $i metadata files that we discussed, and previously within the info2 metadata files. So now let's take a look at this in the file system. I've got a command prompt pulled up and I'm in the root of C. If I do a dir here, we will not see the $recycle.bin folder because it is hidden. If I view hidden files, however, you can see it right at the top. So let's go ahead and enter into that folder. We'll do a dir again, and once again we see nothing, but dir slash a reveals the hidden SID folders. If I run wmic user account git name comma SID, we'll actually see the users on this box and their associated SIDs and RIDs. I'm currently logged in as Davis RG which ends in the RID of 1001. So that is the folder under which my recycle bin should be stored. Let's go ahead and change into it. And when we do, we see four files as expected. Two $i files containing the metadata for the two files I just deleted, and two $r files containing the actual recovery data for those files. If I take, for example, the $r ping file and copy it onto the desktop, we'll see that it is indeed the original file that was deleted. It's just been renamed with a random six character value and in front of that, the $r has been prepended. If I look at one of the two $i files, we'll just open it up with Notepad as an example. 
we can see that it's not easily parsable, but we can see the original path and file name of the file that was deleted, as shown here. However, in just a minute, we're going to look at a tool that makes this much easier to parse. So let's go ahead and copy the two $i metadata files onto the desktop. And now the tool I'll show you is called $i parse. A gentleman named Jason Hale actually wrote this article back in April of 2016. The article is called Fun with Recycle Bin $i Files in Windows 10. Jason's done a bit of research, and the research has shown that Windows 10 incorporates a small structural change to the $i file format, which could cause some tools to not properly parse the artifact. It appears that Windows 10 has added a file name length field to the $i data structure. Additionally, the header version field is also changed from 01 to 02 on Windows 10, which means that we can easily tell if a given $i file came from Windows 10. Now the tool that he wrote, again called $i parse, is extremely easy to use. I've already got it downloaded, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'll go into my tools directory under miscellaneous, and here is $i parse. Now under mode, we can choose to specify a directory of $i files or a single file. Since I've got more than one, I'll leave the directory option chosen. I'll click browse, choose desktop. And now for the output file, we'll just call it output. And that's it. We'll click parse. It shows us that two files have been parsed. And if we open the TSV file that's been generated, we'll see the deletion date and timestamps in UTC. We'll see the original file name and full path of the files that were deleted, their sizes, and we see version as Windows 10 based upon the value of that header field. So that's just how easy it is to use the tool. Now there are plenty of other tools out there as well that can help you parse the metadata associated with RecycleBin, but this is one of the newer tools and something that works particularly well. So I would suggest you take a look at this. I'll of course include a link to the article I just showed you as well as the tool and some additional information regarding Recycle Bin Forensics. And that's pretty much it. I hope this quick look at Recycle Bin Forensics has been useful to you. As always, I would encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next video.